We're back with our analysts. The new concerns that the Senate investigation of Russia's election meddling isn't moving along as quickly as some members would have would have, would like. Uh, David Chalian, uh, it was the House that was supposed to be in trouble with their investigation. Now it looks like the Senate's got some serious complications. Yeah, I, I know you might be shocked, Wolf, that when uh, Congress is investigating something related to the president, that politics may uh, thwart uh, a smooth process here. But uh, to your point that it was first the House, now the Senate, I think that's why, Wolf, we are seeing in a brand new NBC Wall Street Journal poll today, 73 percent of Americans want to see this investigation taken out of Congress and put with an independent outside commission to look into this. I can't tell you the last time I remember 73% of Americans agreeing on anything. That is a very <laughs> high number. You think that's doable? You think, uh, Phil Mudd, that there should be some outside 9-11 type commission investigating as opposed to the House and Senate Intelligence Committees or in addition to the House and Senate Intelligence Committee? I think there should be for two reasons. Number one, what David talked about, the politics of this, but there's another issue that we're not discussing. They are focused in the Senate and the House on the wrong question to start with. The question is, how do we move forward for a next election? There is a time stamp on this. They got to move and ensure that candidates are protected and that there's a conversation with the American people about fake news. The witness should be somebody from Facebook, not Carter Page. The FBI can do the people part of this. And I think one reason this will bog down is that there'll be too much darts thrown at politicians and political figures from back in the campaign and not the basic question of how do you secure the next campaign. Well, quickly, when we get your thoughts, you heard Brian Todd report that uh, there's now some indications the Russians are meddling in the French yeah. presidential election as well to try to get their favorite candidate elected. Uh, you buy that? Yeah, sure. I mean, look at this. The, the, the former president, President Obama, le levied sanctions four months ago, last days of December. The Russians had a choice to make with our NATO allies, that is, proceed with this kind of intervention, which they appear to have done, or respond to the sanctions. It goes further to the point to saying, if you think squeezing the Russians by our actions to today is going to lead them to back away in the next American elections, they're not going to do it. We've got to find another avenue. Because this, this is a serious, they've they got to learn lessons from this to make sure it doesn't happen again. But apparently those lessons are not being learned that quickly. No, definitely not that quickly. Uh, in terms of the investigation, that's why people say elections have consequences, right? If Democrats controlled one House of Congress, this might be proceeding at a more rapid pace. In terms of the French elections, right, if you're Russia, th it worked for them to at least to a degree in the U.S. election. So why not try to, uh, you know, upend things in the French election to, to serve their own ends? Let me get to another issue with you, Jackie, because it's the Anti-Defamation League now reporting that anti-Semitic incidents here in the United States jumped 86 uh, percent over the uh, first quarter uh, of 2017, 2017, and are up uh, by an overall one third with election playing a role in this increase. You've been looking into this. What do you see? I mean, yes, the ADL put this firmly with the election and social media to an extent, um, but they saw a dramatic increase because of the election. And they really said that it, it, this centered around Trump supporters. Now, the administration has been slow in the past to call out incidents of anti-Semitism. They've gotten better. And you saw and you saw this even a few weeks ago when Sean Spicer made some really unfortunate comments and he was very quick to come out and apologize. So bit by bit, they're, they're getting a hold of this. Um, but uh, it, they have some work to do. Yeah, what do you think, uh, David? Uh, look, I think you have these uh, anti-Semitic and racist and other xenophobic sentiments that were always there. I think the way our dialogue has gone from the 2016 election and from, from social media, from other things, has brought some of this stuff up to the surface. There's no question. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's, a, it's a serious problem. You know, uh, David Chalian, uh, Chuck Schumer, the Democratic leader in the Senate, uh, he says he worries about the American democracy. He says if uh, conservative outlets like Breitbart, he said, are viewed with the same credibility as the New York Times. Uh, as you know, even as we speak, I think right about now, the president is hosting a, a reception for conservative media outlets uh, like Breitbart, Daily Caller. What do you make of that? Well, you know, the White House said, Sean Spicer said, these folks uh, didn't get much of an audience with the last administration, and uh, that would make sense. They're conservative media, and uh, th they wanted to reach out and have a conversation with them. Uh, you know, our our politics, uh, our media sort of followed where our politics was going here. We, we live in this world now, Wolf, as you know, where depending what... Uh, 
team you want to root for, that helps you decide which media organizations you're going to follow and get your news from. I don't think it has uh, left us with a really productive uh, governing coalition in Washington. I think it's part of why you see a lot of stasis and not getting things done, because we are all so split off into our own echo chambers. You have, a, you have a problem? I don't have a problem with the president reaching out to conservative media outlets. I don't have a problem with another president or reaching out to liberal media. Now, I don't care that this issue, though, is far more profound than that. And that is when we have a conversation about a wall, about immigration reform, the beginning of the conversation should be what the facts are. What we're seeing with these media outlets, outlets is they're putting together fact and fiction in ways that confuse Americans. We don't have a basis to have a national conversation on this stuff. And that's partly the fault of the media. He, he is reaching out, the president, to a lot of people. He's having dinner with John McCain and Lindsey Graham tonight at the White House. That should be interesting. Oh, to be a fly on the wall yeah. during, that, <laughs> during that meeting. And, and they have definitely been some of the president's biggest detractors. Um, so it'll, it will be interesting to see what comes out of this, um, because it really has been across the board. You can always count on Lindsey Graham and John McCain, too. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to it, cause a little friction. It, it looks increasingly like on a lot of these national security issues, the more hardline views of Lindsey Graham and John McCain, the president's accepting some of them. He certainly accepted. I, I, I wouldn't have described him as hardline, but I would describe him as more mainstream or traditional Republican. President Trump is seeing that some of the things he espoused during the campaign, he's not, when he gets into office and has to govern, he's not as far from McCain and Graham as he may have thought he was. Very quickly, David, it's a good idea, though, for the president to be meeting with these senators. Sure. I mean, I think the president should meet with as many uh, folks on Capitol Hill as he possibly can. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great idea. And and yes, uh, especially because this president hasn't hasn't been having this kind of experience before in his life. So just learning the vocabulary, learning the history all through conversation like that could be very helpful and informative to him in his own decision making process. Totally agree. All right, guys, uh, that's a, a really good conversation. Important note to our viewers. Don't forget to join CNN's Jake Tapper later tonight, a special prime time edition of The Lead. Jake will be on at 9 p.m. Eastern. In fact, every night this week, Monday through Friday, join Jake at 9. That's it for me. Thanks very much for watching. I'm Wolf Blitzer.